Pat, my name is Pastor Steve Nelson, and I'm Phil again. Um, we want to welcome you to our worship service. But there's a fair amount of people who are at home still watching you, and it's not safe to come out. So we do want to welcome you to our worship service as well. And we've got some people here who are familiar faces that we miss. Join with me in our prayer for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from, no, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment to examine your own. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in 
your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the words of good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon us the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
recognize that story. I have to admit that was one of my favorite stories growing up. And you didn't quite I didn't quite hear that. No, just tell us. Okay. Let's see, here we go. No catch it. It's a kid's book. And it features Grover. And I will tell you, the best person to ever read this story, as far as I'm concerned, was my dad. 100% was my father. No one can read that story better than my dad. He does the Grover book perfect. And in that book, Grover is scared about the monster at the end of the page, or at the end of the book. And in our second reading, it says... Second, second verse is, for you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. We already know, we already know that God's going to come. Just like we already know in the book that the monster at the end of the book is Grover himself. But every single time we listen to it, no matter how many times our parents read it to us, we got excited. And many times, I know I begged my dad, don't you dare turn that page. <laughs> Even though we all knew at the end of the book, it was Grover. So, just like we all know that the coming of the Lord is coming, we all know it's going to be a glorious day when he gets here. We still get nervous. We still get anxious. We still see a lot of people that when times get rough, especially right now, that are screaming the end of the day, the year, it's coming, it's coming. Well, we all know it's coming. Why are we all so nervous? And in the gospel reading today, it talks about using our talents, the talents we are given from God, until he does arrive. Use the talents that you have been given. Just like Sandy uses hers every week. Every week we see Sandy's talents. 
And just like Ian and his dad did, thank you very much. Showing your talents, using your talents that God gave you to prepare for his coming. And we don't need to be nervous. We don't need to be scared. We know it's going to be a glorious day. Everyone else will get nervous. We have no reason to. So that's our scripture reading for today and our good sermon. So you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again next week. A reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will do not do good, nor will he harm, do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. Consumed by your anger, we are afraid because of your wrath. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The Regards the power of your wrath, who rightly fears your indignation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. The second reading is from Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, do you not need to have anything written to you? For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the light or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be so sober.
For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise and join me in the Alleluia acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, shall we go. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned him slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now, this is not a fun gospel reading. What am I supposed to do with that? You can tell by all of the readings that we're pointing in the direction of Advent. And that is the time of the year when really we stand on the line and we stare into the darkness, the total darkness, and we come to grips and are familiar once again with our fear and all those things that haunt us. I've never liked this story from Matthew. For years, when I heard it, I knew what I was supposed to do and which servant, servant I was supposed to follow and be like. 
I was afraid. That tribe for a long time identified with the slave who took his talent and buried it in the backyard. The slave feared the master and did not have the courage to take what was given and use it. He was afraid he would lose it all and have nothing left. I saw a glimpse of what that looked like when I was running cross country in high school. This was rural Minnesota, so our, our team wasn't very big. But I was one of the five who our coach depended upon to accumulate the points. Well, okay, we're riding in the bus to Redwood Falls, Minnesota, and my stomach is getting more and more nervous. And I'm feeling the weight of the expectation from who knows who. And finally, when we get to the golf course where we're gonna run, I say to our coach, Coach Remsburg, I'm not feeling very good today. Um, I, I hope, don't count too much on me. And what's a coach to say, but okay, <laughs> just do what you can. The race started, and without the expectation on top of me, I had the most fun, the best race of my life, and I easily came in first place. I'm one of those people that I just don't deal well with people's expectations. If you leave me alone, I'll do just fine. But there are other people like that too. That's why I can identify with the one servant who was afraid and dug a hole in the backyard and buried that town. Okay, when I look at this parable, how can I help people like me? And how might it speak to all of us? Maybe in a different way. I found two things to be helpful. Number one, a talent was a measure of how much a person was paid. And it was a whole lot of money. One talent is worth 15 years of wages. You talk about expectation. That's a lot. That was a lot of money given to these three slaves. And then they were expected to invest this so that the amount given would grow. All we have to do is consider some of the ups and downs in our stock market. Take the last year. Go back to 2008. Or any of us with a pension that was in the stock market, we saw it die pretty bad. And it took a long time for the economy to come back. So millions of people lost money from their pension fund because it was thought that people investing in home mortgages was a sure thing. We don't always live in a certain world. The slave was no different. He knew the risk of investing, and he did not want to disappoint his master and be left with nothing. And so he was afraid to take a risk. Okay, number two, and there are only two. Up until the Middle Ages, the word for talent referred to a measure of money. money. But our words change over time and throughout history. During this period of history, the word talent now began to be used as the word that we understand it today. Talent was used to describe skills, abilities, and money. The parable was meant as a challenge for the people who waited for the second coming of Jesus Christ and was meant to ask a question such as this. What is it that we value the most? And what is it that we are willing to risk to obtain it? And of course, which serve we identify with helps us to answer the question in this way. There have been times 
but I was willing to take a risk and use what God had given me. But for the most part, I struggled with those expectations. And I was afraid to take the risk that I would fail and lose it all. I did not want to disappoint my earthly father, who I greatly respected, or my heavenly father. Then I received a new insight into this parable that has greatly helped me to give it a little bit of twist and see it in a different way. What if the town has nothing to do at all with our time, our money, and our skills, or refer to anything at all that we have? But instead, the talent simply refers to God's mercy, love, and grace. What if the treasure that we have been given by God is simply to invest God's love and grace? Will we bury this in the backyard for safekeeping, or will we invest this in other people by helping them to believe in God and helping them to know that God believes in them. When I think of the talent as to what God has already given to me, then I'm no longer afraid of losing it. If I think I'm receiving God's grace, God expects me to give it away. God even expects me to stumble and screw it up, but still give it away because that's what it's for. And God expects me to use everything at my disposal. My time, my money, my skills and abilities, and to freely use it all so that others will come to know the grace of God as I have. God's grace is not something that we can lose. Once it is given, it's not something we can lose. We have not been given just a little bit. We've been given a lot. God's grace will be renewed every day. Our cup will never be empty. We don't even have to be afraid of having enough because with God, this is just not possible. You know, my cup runneth over. It's true. This attitude has changed the way that I see the world around me. God has not given me more money, or more time, or greater talents, but what God has given me is the assurance of his grace. And because of this, my perspective on giving has changed. I'm no longer afraid of losing what I have or of taking a risk and failing. Because of God's grace, I'm now free to give. Some of you have heard of Irma Bombeck, who's not been with us for a long time, but was a wonderful writer and columnist with great homegrown knowledge and virtue. And I don't know if she really said these words towards the end of her life, but they're attributed to her. I like to believe she said it because she lived as if she would believe these words. She said, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I have not one single talent left and I could say, I have used everything that you have given me, Lord. I've used it all. The sermon technically ends here, but I've got one more thing. I want to show you what this might look like. There are a few pumpkins left. Okay, yeah, it's a pumpkin. What do you do with a pumpkin at Halloween? You watch it? Oh, what do you do? Yeah. I, I don't do anything. I usually take the pumpkin. 
A lot of people paint a face on the pumpkins. I grew up in a time where we didn't paint them on. I don't know if we didn't have any magic markers or, but we took a knife, and why my mother would trust me with a knife, I do not know. <laughs> but we would first cut off the top. We would scoop out all the gunk inside, the seeds and stuff. I did it and put it in a plastic bag. And it was really fun to squeeze because it's gooey. You can do that later on if you want. And then what we do, sorry, my ears are big enough. We make a face on it, don't we? Now mine isn't the best face. My wife would do a much better job because she's an art teacher. Okay, what's the last thing What's the last thing we do after our pumpkin is carved? Put a candle. Put a candle. Yeah, put a candle in. Well, I can't burn a candle in here, can I? Or some of you will call the fire department. Okay, before I light up the candle, because I am, this is what God does for us. This is what happens in our prayer for confession. This is what we have, happens when we hold out our hand and someone's... <laughs> Let me go over here. <laughs> this is what we, happens when we hand out our, hold out our hand and someone says, the body of Christ given for you. When our willingness is open to receive what God has to give to us, like His amazing grace, we give permission to God. You've been waiting for that, way. We give permission from God to open us up, scoop out the stuff that's inside that we do not need, like the dose of our self-centeredness, maybe some greed that slips in there, some jealousy, some fear. We all got it. We got something. God scoops it out, takes it out. And when God does that, it's almost as if we're given a new face. But the best thing of all that happens, got my flashlight over there. You have to use your imagination. You put a candle, you put a candle, you put a candle or a flashlight inside. And when you see the light shining through the pumpkin, who's shining? God is the one who's shining through us. So if you want to give God's grace to someone else and share it, this is the best way to do it. God gives it to us. It shines in us. And they see it by everything we say and everything we do. And guess what they want? They want a pumpkin. No, they want God's love to shine through them as well. Amen.
Jesus rises, joined with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his bed. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Let us pray. God of the whole earth, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world in any small way that we can. Oh God, I don't know, oh, hear you, hear us, oh God. Your mercy is great. Is that what you usually say? Thank you, okay, I've got something different, thank you. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. And boy, have we ever seen it in the last couple of weeks. It's been grand, even in our backyard. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity, where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. But Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nation. Please sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. For some leaders out there of countries who are mighty greedy themselves, and the poorest people in their country bear the burden. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders work together in trade agreements, working for health care around the world, and to cooperate to end human rights abuses, Lord in your mercy. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness and unemployment and loneliness and fear with your radiant love. Send us encouragement and signs of your healing because we sure do need it, Lord in your mercy. Yeah. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. And we carry these people in our hearts and we always will. Thank you for what they taught us and they gave to us. Rouse us to live by their example that saints yet to come may also know your love because we show them your love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, gracious God, for all those people who struggle with whatever it may be, people we know, people we hear about on the other side of the country or the world, especially because of the coronavirus. Dear God, help us all. Restore us to wholeness and help us to get through this as best we can. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Thank you for being in our presence here today. We are blessed. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please be seated? Just a quick word of uh, instruction about communion. Did I fall down again? Boy. <laughs> um, we have pre-filled cups. I think you've got these, these before. Okay, all right. And you know you've got to be careful to open up the top layer 
So you get the wafer, and that'll open both of them up at once. I did that. Um, I will start over here, and, and she will start over here, and we will drop the cup into your hand. Okay, so there's this little touching going on as, as can be. And we'll wash our hands good before we stop. Join me in the great Thanksgiving with the dialogue. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. I'm sorry. It is indeed right our duty and our joy to receive the grace and love that God intends for all creation and then to pass it on to those who are still looking, so that we all may know what God intends for this earth. With this in mind, we join the angels and all of creation, and we praise your name and join their unending name. Holy, Christ, when he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink from this all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join me in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, our Lord in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us back into temptation, deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. If you would ready about the labor of Jesus. The body of Christ given to you. We are ready to die. The blood of Christ shed. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry, just as you have done for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause for announcements. I would like to announce the Mary Martha Circle is meeting this Tuesday. It's a week earlier than usual, but, and instead of bringing a sack lunch, lunch will be provided. So we hope the women of the church will come. We meet in here and have Bible study. And uh, so also Welka is, uh, has a basket back there. We're collecting during this month hats, gloves, scarves, socks for the Salvation Army. So ask that you be generous to help those in need during the cold winter. I want to share with you and ask you all to hold in your heart and lift up in your prayer your community health care workers, your safety workers, your health department employees. The COVID fatigue is unimaginable. Many people are coming in and doing jobs that they are not familiar with. So each and every day that you are wearing your masks, sanitizing your hands, social distancing, you are helping yourselves and all of us. I lift you all up in prayer every day. Thank you very much. I've been talking about Christmas Eve and special music. I do not have anyone signed up for special music after next week. <coughs> the plea is out to everyone, uh, globally, anyway. Uh, we will be having, as it, as it says in the world, to four, uh, three Christmas Eve services, four o'clock, seven, and nine. Um, we, uh, I have brass for all three services that have just signed up. So we will have brass for all three services. That being said, I am assuming that you would like to hear whomever is signing up for special music. If you are interested in seeing Christmas Eve or doing anything else other than the brass are doing for any one of the four, uh, three services, I keep saying that because the first one is four o'clock, any of the three services Christmas Eve, please let me know. I'd like to get that in the Herald. The problem with that is the Herald goes down tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it goes to bed, and, and so we have uh, 24 hours, it's not a big deal, we've dealt with other things worse. So, um, but please, if you are interested, I will take whatever you want for the Advent services starting the 29th, but specifically, I am looking for special music for Christmas Eve. Any ideas, anything, other, as I say, other than the brass. 
thank you ever so much. Volunteerism has been terrific, and I, and I thank you very much for that. I just want to remind everybody and make it heard that we have the annual congregational meeting next Sunday after service. Um, that's so that we can go over the budget. And um, at that time, we'll also be accepting anybody, any nominations from the floor, if anybody feels called to serve on council during this time and for the next year. So you can be thinking of that and thinking of names, and hopefully everybody will come. Thank you. I'll do one announcement too. Uh, you've had uh, a couple people helping you with Chuck. Um, and we continue to keep Chuck in our prayers. I haven't heard any update yet. Um, Pastor Bauer and I are both in Wapakoneta, and I think you may have another person that has been helping. I just want you to know that between us, we will make sure all your services are covered, and one of us will be here. Okay? So, <laughs> so I... We are your fellow pastors in the conference, and we've always had your back, okay? We do announce that pastors will allow us to address the bulletin. Okay, Pastor Boomhauer's address is in the bulletin. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yep, they would appreciate it. I can't imagine how hard this is. Okay. Then the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you the full measure of peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.